Hi everyone, how are you doing? It's Isaac here coming to you live with a bit of a news if you're interested in books. <laughs> yes, I also write as well.、Um, some of you who know s me or don't know me,、um, I pretty much do two things, yeah, just two things. I produce music here at home in、uh, my Studio where I live in Glasgow,、uh, west end of Glasgow, and also DJ as well. And I share these two things as well on my social channels. I, I put it out there for people so they can they can see what's happening, you know, so they can get to know me. And sometimes I put it out there to perhaps to inspire others as well to start their own little, little creative engine, you know, there. Very interesting, isn't it?、Um, But I also am very passionate about writing.、Um, and this is a book, and I'll tell you a little bit about this as well. So,、uh, I'm 30 years old, yeah? <laughs> 30 years old. Yeah, not old, but yeah, it's 30 years old. But when I was about、mm, 9, 10 years old, a little, little, little boy, yeah?、Um, I remember I used to carry with me pretty much every single day a little, little notepad and a pen. And、um, a lot of people ask me, well, why is that? Why, why are you doing? Why do you carry all that stuff? And I remember I was always writing stuff down, things like、um, anything really. Like sometimes I was, I was writing like a, like a little journal of my day to day little things I was doing around, like how I feel, how I think.、Um, Uh, journaling my day, the people I talk about, you know, the places that I was visiting, you know.、Um, yet years passed and more years passed, and I always keep doing that, you know. And until a few years ago, I realized that perhaps this little child sort of a hobby, perhaps this can also transform into a, a bit more than a hobby. Perhaps you can put Down a story, you know, a true story, a fictional story, write something, you know.、Um, and that time came when I was about, about kind of a, I mean, I'm recording this video in、uh, the middle of 2024, yeah, in、uh, May, close to June. But、uh, about, if you remember, about 40 years ago, Uh, not just here in the UK, but all over the world, is to be,、uh, was the pandemic, the lockdown pandemic. And that was the perfect time, perhaps not just for me, but even for you as well, to kind of a, I don't know, just sit down and think about a lot of interesting things, you know. And for creative people, you know, like musicians, uh, uh, business people, entrepreneurs, uh, uh, all this kind of a People who kind of like always think about ideas and all that, like especially for musicians, artists as well.、Um, when they are by themselves, they kind of always come with something a new song, a new piece of music, a new business idea, a new service, a new this, a new that, you know.、Um, and that was the time when I, when I thought about this book. I was, I was going there, you know, I have there a library. If you watch my.、Um, My,、uh, some of my music videos when I record here in, in my studio. I have a bit of a library, and sometimes the, the camera、uh, records straight into the musical instruments and inside the library. And there in my library, I have a lot of,、uh, a lot of these notebooks from the time when I was a little boy, young, yeah, nine, ten years old. And during the pandemic, I got, kind of went there and I spent days and days and weeks and weeks, you know. Is that Freaking pandemic was like, I don't know, like like almost a year or whatever, half a year. And I had so much time to kind of flip through those. And I just thought that was the right time to kind of、uh, write a little novel.、Um, and it happened, yeah. So in my hand here, I'm holding a book and it's called Blood and Guts in Jail. And I'll tell you about the name and I'll tell you what's happening inside, this, inside the book, the, the story and things.、Um, so, during the pandemic, a lot, a lot of kind of、uh, thoughts and emotions came inside me, outside me, inside me, outside me, you know, like all kind of、uh, sometimes all right emotions, sometimes not so all right.、Uh, I know 
being by yourself, lonely, thinking about different things and all that. And um, I was thinking what kind of a what kind of a story to put down. And um, I kind of let my own emotions to kind of a go through me and imagine how it will be like to write a story going through the worst of things like the worst period in my life yeah even if it is a complete fiction story and and i imagine i mean authors and writers sometimes they do this little trick like um sometimes they will take a moment from their own life and kind of a put it into the story and change the characters change the locations the names the um, this is a little trick that even musicians, uh, songwriters, you know, especially the songwriters, you know, when you listen to the radio, songs about love, relationships, lost, and you see those words, they relate with the people, you know, uh, the love of your life, the, the this, the that, the that, you know. Um, but coming back to my book, um, I thought about how it would be like to write a book and imagining going through the worst period of my life. And I was, I, I just sat there on a the table, like what kind of a subject to do that? Should I, should it be like a, like a terminal illness, like something like very bad? And it's like, no, that's too scary. And how would it be like to imagine this character? Um, it's called Saint Isaac, very much of a coincidence because my name is Isaac Saint. <laughs> Isaac Bjorn. So I, I named this character Saint Isaac and this character is a young man about the age 20 something years old and he's a very talented young man. He has so many so many so many passions and gifts and goals in life. He's good at so many things yet nobody cares and nobody's interested in his in his in his what he want, has to offer to the world his passion for making music, his passion for photography, his passion for creative activities, his passions to to um, be an amazing friend, to meet amazing people. He was always alone by himself, sad, lonely, depressed. And I'm, I'm not calling myself like, I'm not that kind of a person, but I just imagine how it would be like to be this kind of a person. And to be honest with you, I wrote this book by simply just imagining being that person. So I then, you know, this the, this book starts with this little little young man, you know, this young man, Saint Isaac, being in his recording studio in his home, and. He went into he went into a big trouble. Um, he started taking drugs, and he kind of became sort of a, like a, like addicted to some specific drugs, and he had to repay the people who borrowed the drugs or borrowed the money to to, to consume those drugs, and um, he. Um, how should I put it? Because it's, it's a very twisted story, my God. I mean, if you read this book, you'll be amazed how, you know, very interesting it is. Uh, but bear with me. And then one day, he's he's being caught by the police, and um, he has to go to the court for uh, being accused for selling and consuming drugs. And his lawyer, his lawyer, tells him that. If you are found guilty by uh, consumption of the drugs and selling of those drugs, and it was like silly drugs, like just like um, what is that thing called? Cannabis, smoking cannabis is like very silly stuff. Yeah, he said that you're going to go to prison, and he eventually goes to prison for 100 days. Now here's the interesting part. Yeah, the judge sends him not to a normal prison, but to a mental illness prison. Imagine that, like a place where crazy people live. And he was not that person. He was not a crazy person. He was a, he was just a normal human being who just went into some troubles by simply being around the wrong people.
Imagine that. You see, this can happen to the best of us. Like, um, you met the wrong people. Yeah, you are a good person of a good character, yet you hang out with the wrong people, and you're likely to, I don't know, to do things which is not in your nature. So this is what this, this young man, he been around the wrong people and he cut these habits, which was not his habits. He just picked them up from the wrong people and he arrives in this prison, this mental illness prison. Because he was, he was completely different from anyone else there, he starts to get in serious problems there like he's being he's being attacked there he's being wrongly accused and wrongly judged because he was very different obviously he was a normal human being like absolutely normal and he's being sent to a mental illness prison which there you deal with totally different kind of people obviously crazy weird people yeah like psychopaths uh, schizophrenics and all that kind of stuff not because he's something wrong with that but that he's just perhaps was not the right place for him there he's being uh, b because he was because he was completely different from the other prisoners the governor puts him in a different side of the institution of the of the building by himself alone and he lock, locks him there for 100 days. For 100 days, he's been locked in this small little cubicle room. And there, he, got, he starts to... Oh God, um, you will love this book so much because it's, you know how... I explain here how this young man starts to think and what he starts to do there and how he behaves. and. At some point, he starts to create this imaginary, uh, imaginary people in his mind, and that happened from the from the drugs that the mental illness institution was given to him. They being obviously in, in a crazy people's place. Most of the people who are there, they receive this daily dose of uh, drugs, medicines, and. He didn't supposed to take those, but because he took those, he had to take those every single day. He kind of like brainwashed him to become one with the weirdos. Like he almost became like, like the other prisoners. And the effect from those drugs from that institution made him to um, develop this very interesting imagination. Um, one day he wakes up from his bed and he gets this pen and paper and he starts to write this story and he creates these imaginary imaginary friends people uh, places in his mind he starts to create his heroine a girl the love of his life this this woman never existed but existed in his own imagination from there he starts to argue with her by these imaginary letters. Oh God, I can't believe what I wrote in this book. It's like sometimes like I feel like people kind of get scared what they're going to read in this book. But in a way, it's something very real, very raw, very authentic, strong voice. Perhaps that's the right word. Yeah. Um, every single day for 100 days, this young man in that prison cell he starts to create these very interesting stories at some point he actually enjoys it being there because there he discovers something very important that was hidden inside him the passion and the talent for writing inside the prison he became a writer he published a, he published he wrote a book this book you see to be able to to write this book i had to myself became become the character of this book and it was in a way embarrassing but in a way it was like something to live like you know like for example actors hollywood actors you see um 
when an actor is playing a character, see, uh, let's name an actor, I don't know, Brad Pitt, uh, Angelina Jolie, a, 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 an actor, an established actor, you see, in their own life, they are completely normal human beings like me, like you. They wake up in the morning, they go to the kitchen, they have their breakfast, their cup of tea, their coffee, you know, they, they go outside, they go to the jogging, they go to the cinema, they go to the movies, they go to their job, whatever. But when they're making the roles, the movie, you see, they are playing a completely different life. They are in a in the character shoe. They became a, I don't know, a bank robber, a, a, whatever, a, a politician, a president, a prime minister, um, an FBI agent, like those X-Files, you know, I love X-Files so much. I think X-Files, the series X-Files from 1991, inspired me actually a little bit to write this book in some concepts, because if you, if you, if you watched X-Files, um, Agent Scully and Agent Mulder, you know, every single episode is about these conspiracies and these um, experiences with all these different characters, sometimes aliens, sometimes weird people, sometimes all this twisted story, which is like, at some point, it's like, oh my god, I can't believe what kind of a things, what kind of a, how should I put it, what it's 1991 yeah so you was very advanced for 1991 to have that stuff on the screen on the television so yeah x files inspired me quite a bit to write this book um closer to the end of the book um the story is so twisted at some point that i did not knew how to what no i did not knew at some point what to write next and um, if, you if you remember earlier, I said something like some writers, authors, writers, musicians, songwriters as well, sometimes they will look into their own life to find an experience and they will take that experience, which is a real experience, and they will project that into their music, into their songs, into their, if he's a writer, into their book. They will write a fiction book, but they will take their real experience and they will place it in their own book or songs or music or photography, whatever they do, and that will be a real experience, but will make it look a fictional experience. So there's, a, there's some parts, some stories, because each, uh, I told you about this young man, he's going to this institution for 100 days, and this book is marked from day one to day 100, yeah, day one, day two, day three. So every single uh, day, there is a completely new story into this book, yeah. It's very unique the way written, yeah. It's like a journal, a journalistic story of this young man experiencing his emotions and everything what happens around him and inside his mind, his own imagination. And during the mid, close to the end, I was like thinking like, oh my God, things are so twisted here that i don't know what how to continue to make it to to look like an end a good end of the book and um there's some experiences from my life like real experiences like actually a hundred percent real from 2007 from 2009 as well um in 2007, I came to this country inside the UK and I had absolutely almost no English. I could only speak French and Romanian. And uh, it was very difficult for me to find a job during those times. Um, and I remember I used to work in a, in a place in London. It's called Gaucho. Gaucho restaurant is a Michelin and star, very high cuisine. Is in Piccadilly Circus, in the heart of London, yeah, Piccadilly Circus. And I was working as a pot washer. A pot washer. What is doing a pot washer? It's washing the pots and the floor. It's the worst job you can possibly do. And in a kitchen with, you know, kitchen chefs, it's terrible. <laughs> and I remember I worked there for like half a year, six, seven, seven, and probably eight months, I don't know. But, um, um, I remember one one night I finished my shift 
and I was staying in a hostel. I will remember all my life that hostel. It's called Basewater Hostel, and it's in in a Notting Hill. And uh, that was the only place I could afford, you know, like something cheap. You know, I was in the beginning, trying to find my way, learn English, find a job, all that kind of stuff. I was a young man, <laughs> um, and I remember. Um, this kitchen porter shift, this pot washing shift, it was always very late shifts, like, you know, like, uh, the chefs are finishing their shifts about um, 11 o'clock in the night, the service is shut down, and then there's the people like me, the pot washer, who come to clean the floor, wash the dishes, wash the pots, clean the sections, and every single night, my shifts were pretty much finished about one o'clock in the night which is very late and i remember uh because this place gaucho was in the heart of london in piccadilly and at that time you know uh, um there was not much just just walk and it was a very beautiful pleasant walk you know uh london eye london bridge uh, it's a very beautiful. I was enjoying that walk because I, I I will listen to my favorite music in my iPod. And I should saying this into this book. And I remember that night I was very. I chose a different path to go more more faster to what I more faster. I was very tired. I wanted to sleep. And I took this very dark street, dark alley. And there was these two individuals. You know, I just I remember was listening to my music and just like walk like that. And in two seconds. I received like a, a dozen punches in my face, in my stomach, in my... I just did not know how that happened. I just fell on the floor almost unconscious, almost. And I remember these guys, they beat me so bad and they stole my iPod and 10, 15 pounds. And I had like a, like a, like a broken rib, a broken, a bro broken, broken head, my, my, uh, uh, it was very bad, yeah. And I remember the police found me on the floor with blood and all this, and uh, they took a statement from me. And then, then they managed to find those two individuals by by DNA because one of them, after he beat me, he took a piss, he took his dick, and he pissed on me on my face. Imagine that! I mean, you mug someone, you bit, but just leave him be. D -d don't piss. That's like disgusting, yeah. And the police, they took a DNA sample from me. And based on that DNA sample, they managed, very smart police work actually, they managed to find those individuals. They already had criminal record convictions and they've been there into the database of the London police. And they managed to find them through the DNA match. Imagine that, how smart police work. And that experience is actually in the book. So you remember what I said earlier, like earlier, some... Uh, artists, musicians, authors, songwriters, they will sometimes, even if they are creating a fictional thing, a book, a song, a, anything, they will take an experience from their life, a real experience, and they will merge that with what they are trying to do, their artistic creation. To make it to look a fictional thing, to make it to look likable to the people, you see, this is very interesting. If you are like a, if you're like an artistic individual, an artistic person, a DJ, a musician, an author, a writer, anything creative, this is an amazing skill to learn and to transmute your, transmute your own emotions, your own, your own things from your own life, from the past, from the present. Perhaps you're the kind of person who visualize. Yes, very possible. You visualize into the future. You you think you use your own imagination how you will want your your artistic creation to be. You see, it's very these are very interesting things to not just know but also to learn. You see, I I wrote this book just based on these very basic um, um, artistic things that all the artists around us that are using and that is imagination imagination yeah so um the book is called blood and guts in jail and i kind of gave you a background what's happening and what it's all about and i promise you that you will enjoy this book so much perhaps at some point you will start to laugh because it's very funny especially when this young man he starts to have these arguments 
with this imaginary girl that he created in his mind. He started to have these uh, arguments by letters, but this is just like imaginary letters. Yeah. And she replies him something to make him to be upset. And then he replies back with a story that makes her to be so much upset. And then she sends back, it's called cables. Yeah. Um, there is also some art in this book. Yeah. Um, let me show you a little bit. Yeah, obviously my face, as I said earlier, I'm playing the role, I'm playing the character in this book. Its name is Saint Isaac. <laughs> um, and it's a lot of a lot of art as well. There's about 20 pieces of art. Look, another one here. I actually hand draw this. Um, I can draw as well by hand. Something that I, I developed when I was very, very young. Um, you see, I'm very into you. These kind of letters I told you earlier that um, the character starts to communicate with this Harry and this girl. Um, look at this one. This one is such a, I love this one. How you see, look at this. There's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, um, funny stuff in this book that you will enjoy a good laughter. You will laugh sometimes. Sometimes you'll be very emotional as well. Things like um, when this character, this young man, is getting very sad and how he feels. I mean, seriously, I'm being so honest with you. It was so difficult to write. It took me about almost four years to write this book. And it was so difficult to write. I wrote this book so many times. Uh, how should I put it? Um, this book supposed to be finished about two years ago. And in the last two years, I, I wrote this book another four or five times because it was very, just very difficult how to put myself in the shoes of the character. You know, you know. Sometimes I actually think how difficult it is for these um, Hollywood producers. You know, these people from the Hollywood, the directors, the ones who are creating the script for the movie. Do you imagine that? Because you see, the actor takes the role. Let's say he takes the role of a of a, of a bank robber. Yeah. Let's say, um, and then he has to create a script about the life of that individual. Who is that man? Yeah, How, what age it is? What is his background? What food he likes? What what is his favorite music? Uh, does he has any families? His wife, uh, children. You see, you have to create background to each character. Then, in that background, outside of that more background where that character goes education uh school job young age middle age older age you see um for this screen s s directors you know movie directors only it's an incredible difficult job because they have to create all this incredible script like you writing the script of someone's life from the moment he's born to, to, to when he's getting old and die and, and to create a script for every single day, I mean, not just a day, years, months ahead, projecting the future, you know, using so much imagination of that person, character. It's an incredible skill to have and it requires a lot of imagination. And that's why it took me so long to write this book almost four years because I had to use an incredible amount of imagination at some point I thought I'm going crazy like um, um, I was thinking like what is wrong with me like oh I stopped for like months and then I came back and this and that it was a very just very difficult book to write but um, if you want to give it a go to find out more what's happening in this book to read the story um, you see, I self-published this and I'm looking at the moment to find an agent to actually proper publish this in the bookstores all over the world because this is a very special book. I sent this to a publisher and they said to me that 
but I think they are very interesting. Uh, they are very interesting what I what I done, what I wrote here inside. So at some point, this might be an actual proper publishing in actual bookstores. But at the moment, what I've done, I self-published this through my own company, Isa Bjorn and Co Limited. I have my own company, and I created my own design. As you can see, this is my book cover. Yeah, hard copy, very nice, very about 250 pages. So that's the front. This is my face. I design everything what you see here. I design with my own hands and my own imagination. And that's the back as well. Yeah. And as you can see here, there is a follow up to this book. It's called Blood and Gas Before I Die. So what is happening? This young man, at the end of the 100 days, he's going out of the prison. He's going out and then he's gonna live a very interesting and creative life on the outside. He's going to travel the world. He's gonna follow his dreams. He's gonna follow his passions, his dreams and all that kind of stuff. And he's gonna, he's gonna live a completely different life, a successful life. And I'm writing a follow up to this book. Yeah, the blood and gas before I die. Unfortunately, at some point it will be an end. So that's how I'm writing the follow up to this book. Yeah. So, something else now. There is also an audiobook. You see, Blood and Guts in Jail also has an audiobook. And you'll find it on Spotify, on my artist profile, Isaac Bjorn, or on my YouTube channel, Isaac Bjorn. The audiobook, it's called Nonsense Literature. Yeah, Nonsense Literature. And perhaps you ask me, well, what, Isaac, why did you call it different? I wanted to call it different because the audiobook is completely different. Yeah, there is the story from inside and there is a more story. Um, you will hear his voice narrated by an agency. I, I paid an agency uh, to, to narrate for me a female and a man like Saint Isaac, the character narrated as a man. And there is this Julia, his heroine, and he's narrated by a female. And the audiobook is so interesting um, because you'll, you'll hear them both arguing, exchanging this communication between them. It's like a, like a theater, seriously, like, you know, those old school theaters on, on, on TVs, like, like on the radio, something like that. And I also composed uh, the music. For the background so it's not just just the talking the narrative it's also my own music almost nine hours of audio that was like so difficult to do oh god because see when you go to the cinema you watch the movie and then you have the sound yeah the soundtrack yeah which the soundtrack makes you be more excited more more focus on this on the story on the movie yeah and what's interesting like when the movie goes to a climax when it's like car chasing or people fighting all that you see the sound it's more climax as well and it was very difficult for me to kind of a transmute these emotions from the story to the soundtrack as well and i managed to do it quite well i believe volume one to volume five there's five volumes of this book yeah uh, and you all find them on my youtube channel uh, or on spotify isaac bjorn yeah i already sent volume one in spotify and on youtube um, i'm working at the moment on volume two three four and five and um, i believe so is in may 2024 if you watch this video by the end of 2024 or 2025 everything is all there the full audiobook nonsense literature which it is blood and guts in jail um so finally i uh, i'm sorry i kept you like half an hour here but i wanted to give you a full insight of what's happening um the story how the story came to be in existence and how it ends and all that kind of stuff and the audiobook as well you see if you will think about well isaac i don't know what you say there is quite interested quite interesting i would like to have a look to that book and i would like to check it out you see this is a hardcover yeah that's a hardcover and there's also 
a paperback, you see? That's a paperback. It's exactly the same book, yeah? Look at them. I'm just gonna put them side by side, you see? See the hard the hardcover, it's just slightly bigger and the paperback is smaller, yeah? As you can see, this one is the paperback. This one is hard copy, yeah? So, I like to believe into um, Company, how should I say? I like to believe into, you see, um, making artistic things, uh, creating a piece of music, writing a book, um, painting something. These are not things that are so easy. This takes time. I mean, it took me 40 years to do this. That's a long time, 40 years. It's a huge chunk of time from someone's life. Same as making an amazing piece of music. It requires weeks and weeks of making the song amazing and mastering and all that so people can enjoy beautiful sound you know in their headphones and all that or painting as well some painters spend 10 years on painting the masterpiece painting something unique like Pablo Picasso used to spend like freaking 25 years on his masterpieces and all that maybe I'm exaggerating yeah we are not Pablo Picasso we are not uh, the renaissance men and all that kind of stuff we are just simple human beings and we try to give a message out there to the people that it is so important to uh, make the author or the musician or the writer or the dj make him feel or make her she make her make her feel that her stuff or his stuff is worth is worth and that's why it's so important that always to pay for the what you receive for the creation of that artistic thing you know i really like to believe into um um rewarding perhaps that's the right word rewarding the person with the right amount of money so he he or she can feel so good that okay i created something from my own hands from my own imagination and people love it and i actually managed to get a bit of a reward to monetize it to you know, to buy a better computer, to buy a better keyboard, to buy a different, a better mobile phone, a better a jacket, you know. These are so important things. Because otherwise, if you give your stuff for free to everyone, and it's nothing wrong with that. You should give stuff for free as well, you know, a little gift and all that. But see, when you give absolutely everything, especially stuff that you spend years and years you put all your creativity and, and, and all that into that and you give it for free to people. Here's something interesting because I actually tested that. People will not pay attention. They will take it for granted. So always, yeah, if you ever create a piece of, of anything, a song, a book, a picture, a painting, anything, always, yeah, think about your worth because you are worth it, you are worth it, and charge people for your artistic creation, yeah. So that's me just explaining how it works, yeah. So if you feel that you want this book to give it a go, to have a look, it costs 35 pounds, British pounds, yeah, 35 for the hardcover, and for the paperback, it costs 30 pounds, yeah, 30, 30, yeah. And plus the shipping, of course. If you're based in the UK, um, I believe there will be another two pounds by Royal Mail. If you're based in Europe, I believe there will be another four or five euros on top of that. Yeah, this is an amazing piece of art, and it took me a very long time. And I must charge you for what for what I created here because it's worth it, and it's a beautiful thing what I created. Yeah, it's a beautiful story. With that in mind, thank you so much for watching 38 minutes, almost 40 minutes. I just wanted to give you a full insight of what I've done, how it came to existence, the, the process, um, a bit more background around. So perhaps you as well, inspire you as well, perhaps you as well, you you are an artistic person as well, you know, perhaps you're a musician, perhaps you're a photographer, perhaps you, perhaps you are none of that, but you will want to be at least one of that, yeah, very important, and perhaps I inspired you as well to write your own story, a real story, a fictional story, anything really, yeah, and how things works, yeah, so thank you so much for watching 40 minutes, <laughs> it's like a movie, isn't it, but I believe it's something good to 
kind of a take in and make your own decision how things works things that 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 yeah so my name is isaac and this is my book yeah blood and guts in jail don't forget to check it out and there's also the audiobook as well yeah nonsense literature which is on my spotify artist profile isaac bjorn or simply on my youtube channel isaac bjorn yeah and if you want to get this book you can just simply ask me isaac i want this book to give it a go and you can do this through the usual social media channels every single channel that i have it has a contact thing like a message or like an email my phone number i'm very transparent you can also message me at contact at isaacbjorn.com that is email address or you can also go to my website isaacbjorn.com Calm, where this book is listed for sale so thank you so much for listening and for watching yeah bye